everyone. This is Robin Short with the training department. We have a good uh, training video today for you on using area blocks and reference blocks. These are really good tools uh, for uh, doing some more accurate adjusting instead of just kind of guessing what the square footage of is for these these particular areas that we're hi highlighting. We can use the area blocks and reference blocks and use the proof, uh, parameters in them to set our adjusting techniques. So let's get to work. I'll show you a couple of tricks here. So I've got a, a simple sketch set up for a couple of rooms uh, to show you a few things. First of all, <clears throat> we're looking at the, the area block and the uh, area block and the reference block tools right here. <clears throat> So let's say that we, we have this living room and we need to put tile uh, at this entry door here. So we would uh, select the area block, left click, and it'll load to the cursor. Now you'll just move it over to the little living room and we're gonna left click, hold it, and drag it. Now sometimes when you let go, it doesn't stay. Let's see, oh, stay to this time. If it doesn't, You'll just set it in the middle of the room and then drag it over to your area. Uh, then uh, we can uh, we can measure this, uh, set up our uh, measurements. Let's say this is six by four, and that reference box is there. You can label it by highlighting the label and say uh, tile floor if you wish. And then you've you've got that set up. Now, in order to use it for estimating we would go back to the, um, uh, the options screen up here at the top. We have visible windows in full screen. I've got it in full screen mode. You can highlight that. Just come down and just reload the defaults. Now I've got my search window up and my item estimating up here. Uh, to center that up, I'll just select uh, the center key. Then we can put in, uh, let's put in FCT for tile and average grade, uh, let's just say that. And uh, we can go tile flooring, it'll load on the cursor. We'll drag it over and just highlight the tile area, left click and drop it. And you can see at the bottom, um, it estimated 40 to 24 square feet and you're all done. Now you can see that it's still loaded on the cursor, just hit that escape key goes off for you. So we have our tile floor estimated per um, per the area block. Now we can go back to full screen and I can hit uh, the shift key and the minus that centers it up. Let's say that uh, we're looking at this staircase. Let's look at this in 3D, hit the number three, and you can see the staircase goes up from the first floor up to the second floor but when we go to the second floor you can see that it doesn't come through the floor so if we were going to put uh, carpet in this floor for an example we wouldn't be deducting the area of the staircase coming up through the floor so a way to do that is going to the second floor we can again go to the tools go to the area reference and we can drop that into the room here. And again, sometimes it, it, it doesn't stay for us, but see like that, it doesn't stay. So when we hit it again, we can just kind of put it in the middle of the room and now we can take the diamond and we can move it in position. Uh, we can, let's say this is nine feet. Uh, let's say this is three feet. Now, just to sh illustrate, the area would reference the area. Uh, if we look at it in 3D view, you can see the, co the color change here. But the staircase is still not showing through, so what do we need to do? Uh, we need to go to the properties of the area, and down here we've got a hole, yes or no. We will select that, and let's say yes. So when we select that, now we got a hole in the floor so that staircase can come through. Go back to 3D view and let's look at all levels. Oh, I got the roof on this one. Let's zoom in. And you can see, I think you can see, now the staircase comes up through it 
and if you put carbon in that in that in that area, whoops. Uh, if you put carpet in that area, it would show through. So just giving that a look here, and let's zoom in. You hit the space bar, drag it down. There we go, I'm back in there. <laughs> there we go, and you've got some showing that there. Okay, let's go back to that um, plain view. So now the area's got a hole in it, so the staircase can come up through it. And if you put carpet in this room, it would not apply to the area of the hole. And that way, the, car, the stairway runs all the way through. Uh, let's go to the roof for a second. Uh, let's say we've got a skylights, and we don't want to obviously shingle the areas of the skylights. So again, we use the reference key, and we can just hold and drag and let's say we've got two so instead of going up here again and dragging another one and trying to get the dimensions we can just left we can left click or right click rather uh, copy it and then paste it and there we go so again we would put references as a whole we're theoretically putting a hole in the roof so that that area uh, would not be shingled and there we are so just a couple of ways to use the reference tool in that regard uh, we can put tile roofing in it uh, we can put a hole in the floor uh, we can put a couple of holes in the roof for skylights or whatnot the area that you don't want to uh, use you want to take out that area when you're estimating okay now let's Let's, uh, let's use the reference blocks. Um, reference blocks are used for like cabinets. So if I'm gonna put a cabinet in here, I could go this route for a straight line cabinets. Or if I've got an L shape, we can use the brake tool and we can just pull that down using the brake tool. Now that's, that's bottom lower cabinets and we can see on the properties that the height of those cabinets are three feet from the floor and the distance from the floor is zero so they're sitting right on the floor now in the behavior mode if it's shrunk here just open that up we can remove the floory floor linoleum behind the cabinets um, if they were uh, upper cabinets butted to the ceiling we could remove that area we can remove the area behind it under it uh, above it so we can use those parameters to take out the area behind the cabinets. Let's say um, we've got upper cabinets. So I would just, again, just copy and paste, drop that in the room, and I would probably shrink this a little bit. Let's just shrink them because the upper cabinets are not as wide as the lower cabinets. Now, um, before I put it in there, I'm going to go to the properties. This time, we want the distance from the floor, let's say, five feet, because it would be three feet on the cabinets, two feet in between the lower cabinets and the upper cabinets, and the height of them we can leave three feet, or we could change it to, say, two and a half, something like that. Now, we can just move, move that in over top, and there we go. We can hit the 3D view, and you can see your lower cabinets and your upper cabinets right in there for you like that, okay? Now let's go back to plain view. Just another little tip, uh, you can label these, these, you know, you can change the label on them. Let's say upper. Let's say you don't like that label there. You remember, I don't know if you know, but you can, you can highlight over the, the diamond, hit the space bar that's going to turn that green now you can left click and hold down and you can move that label where you want or you can hit the tab and you can change it anywhere you want like that if you wanted to or I could move this one by highlighting hit the space bar turns it green left click hold it move it um, just another tidbit, well, 
kid bidding. <laughs> the line item, the line. Uh, this is also maybe a good one if you're trying to show where the water went, how far the water traveled. If you're working on water loss, you can use the line, and you could you could use the line like that if you want, and then you could make a note um, that the area of of water travel. Uh, you can also, while we're doing this, you can go to the annotations. We've got a freehand line over here. You can use this one to, you know, just hold your mouse down and you can say, hey, water travel to this area here. You could put a, you could put a rectangle in. Uh, you could put a reference block in. You could say water travel. I think I hit the wrong button, guys. Sorry, but you could put a you could put a text is what I'm trying to do. A text here, and you could say water travel, something like that. Here, uh, you could also use another line, and you could show go like that. So you could, you know, I'm just I'm just giving you this is more than reference and area blocks, but just just a couple of ideas of what you can do with a reference block. Okay, let's go back to tools and get back on point. Let's go back to the blo uh, reference block. Let's say we have a chimney down here, so we can reference block. We can put a, let's say this is the uh, fireplace. Whoopsie, it didn't, it didn't stay. No problem, just bring it out and then move it into the wall position where you want it. Uh, you can, Relabel it. You can change the dimensions. Uh, if we look at the properties on this, looking at the properties on this on this reference block, it's three feet high and it's on the floor. And again, we can remove anything behind it. And let's say that we have a chimney now, uh, a chase that goes up. I'm going to copy and paste this in the room and let's make this a little smaller for our chimney chase and I'm going to say that this one goes make that bigger put that right there in the middle okay now let's go to the parameters properties let's say the distance off the floor is three feet and the height, let's say 24 feet. 24 feet to illustrate a point. Now when we go to 3D view, you can see that that chimney goes straight up. And if we look at all, it'll go through the second floor and out the roof. So if that particular, you know, in this example, if that chimney chase went through first floor, up through the second floor and out the roof, that's how we could do that. Just giving you an example of what can be done there on that. Um, plain view again. Um, the properties also allow us to change material text or color. So if we say none, we can go over here and drop that down. Let's say it's brick faced. And then you can uh, open that up. Let's say you like this one, you like this one, you like this, a lot of, a lot of examples. Let's just say that one. And now when we go back to 3D, it's all it's all bricked up now. Okay, so there you go. Um, we could go to the first reference block. We can change the color if we wish. Instead of green, we could go red. And back to 3D, just showing you that you can change the colors, you can change the material on those. Just give you an idea of what you can do with uh, the, the reference blocks and the area blocks. Uh, let's go to the elevation. I've got an elevation. You can hit the shift minus, brings it to center. Uh, let's say we've got a door and a couple windows. Area blocks good for this. So we can go, you know, there's a door. You could say that's a door. If you wish. And then I just copy and paste for a window. 
change the label, window. Again, we have to go to the properties and select it as a hole and say yes. Why? Because we're putting a hole in the elevation so we won't be any, having any painting over or any siding or anything like that. Say yes on the door. Now we've created holes. If we go to 3D view, you can see that the holes are there. If you wanted to put siding on this, you could just you know, go to your uh, estimate sketch search, drop the siding right on that elevation. So just again, just an, another way to show you that area Area blocks can be used for windows. Uh, they could be used for flooring. Uh, they can be used for the flooring. They can be created to put a hole in the door. Uh, they could be put in for skylights on a roof. When we look at the elevations, we can use reference blocks for cabinetry, uh, we can fireplaces. Uh, any any number of things that you want to apply a reference block to and checking those uh, those uh, different types of properties in there so uh, a lot of ways to use the reference blocks and the area blocks um, it's real easy to estimate off of those using the drop and drag method when you select the search key on those things um, it's accurate. Uh, you can relabel them. You can change the labels uh, by hitting your, uh, hovering over the label, hitting the space bar, and dragging that label anywhere that you want. So, hopefully, you know uh, this will help you down the road when you're estimating, making your sketches look absolutely great. We appreciate you watching the video. Thank you for working for Worley. We really do appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.